Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number Analysis When Jack was a young man in his early 20s during the 1960s, he had tried to work in his father's insurance business, as was expected of him. Jack 196020 His two older brothers fit in easily and seemed to enjoy their work. But Jack was bored with the insurance industry. Jack. It was worse than being bored, he said. Dot. I felt like I was dying inside. Dot. Jack felt drawn to hair styling and dreamed of owning a hair shop with a lively environment. Jack. He was sure that he would enjoy the creative and social aspects of it and that he'd be successful. When he was 26, Jack approached his father and expressed his intentions of leaving the business to become a hairstylist. 26, Jack. As Jack anticipated, his father raged and accused Jack of being selfish, ungrateful, and unmanly. Jack, Jack. In the face of his father's fury, Jack felt confusion and fear. Jack. His resolve became weak. But then a force filled his chest and he stood firm in his decision. In following his path, Jack not only ran three flourishing hair shops, but also helped his clients experience their inner beauty by listening and encouraging them when they faced dark times. Jack. His love for his work led to donating time and talent at nursing homes, which in turn led to becoming a hospice volunteer, and eventually to starting fundraising efforts for the hospice program in his community. And all this laid a strong stepping stone for another courageous move in his life. When, after having two healthy children of their own, Jack and his wife, Michelle, decided to bring an orphaned child into their family, his father threatened to disown them. Jack Mitchell Lee. Jack understood that his father feared adoption, in this case especially because the child was of a different racial background than their family. Jack. Jack and Michelle risked rejection and went ahead with the adoption. Jack Mitchell Lee. It took years but eventually Jack's father loved the little girl and accepted his son's independent choices. Jack. Jack realized that, although he often felt fear and still does, he has always had courage. Jack. In fact, courage was the scaffolding around which he had built richness into his life. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 0103. Henrietta is one of the greatest queens of song. Henrietta. She had to go through a severe struggle before she attained the enviable position as the greatest singer Germany had produced. At the beginning of her career she was hissed off a Vienna stage by the friends of her rival, Amelia. Amelia. But in spite of this defeat, Henrietta endured until all Europe was at her feet. Henrietta. Many years later, when Henrietta was at the height of her fame, one day she was riding through the streets of Berlin. Henrietta. Soon she came across a little girl leading a blind woman. She was touched by the woman's helplessness, and she impulsively beckoned the child to her, saying come here, my child. Who is that you are leading by the hand? The answer was, that's my mother, Amelia Steininger. She used to be a great singer, but she lost her voice, and she cried so much about it that now she can't see any more. Amelia Steininger Dot. Henrietta inquired their address and then told the child, Tell your mother an old acquaintance will call on her this afternoon. Henrietta. Dot. She searched out their place and undertook the care of both mother and daughter. At her request, a skilled doctor tried to restore Amelia's sight, but it was in vain. Amelia. But Henrietta's kindness to her former rival did not stop here. Henrietta. The next week she gave a benefit concert for the poor woman, and it was said that on that occasion Henrietta sang as she had never sung before. Henrietta. And who can doubt that with the applause of that vast audience there was mingled the applause of the angels in heaven who rejoice over the good deeds of those below. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 0406. 
It was a hot day in early fall. Wilder was heading to the school field for his first training. Wilder. He had just joined the team with five other students after a successful tryout. Approaching the field, he saw players getting ready, pulling up their socks and strapping on shin guards. But they weren't together. New players were sitting in the shade by the garage, while the others were standing in the sun by the right pole. Then Coach McGraw came and watched the players. McGraw. Coach McGraw, too, saw the pattern new kids and others grouping separately. McGraw. This has to change, he thought. Dot. He wanted a winning team. To do that, he needed to build relationships. I want you guys to come over here in the middle and sit, he called the players as he walked over. Dot. You. McGraw roared, pointing at Wilder. McGraw. Wilder. Come here onto the field and sit. And Johnny. You sit over there. Johnny. He started pointing, making sure they mixed together. Wilder realized what coach was trying to do, so he hopped onto the field. Wilder. McGraw continued to point, calling each player out, until he was satisfied with the rearrangement. McGraw. Okay, this is how it's going to be he began. We need to learn how to trust and work with each other. This is how a team plays. This is how I want you to be on and off the field, together. Dot. The players looked at each other. Almost immediately, McGraw noticed a change in their postures and faces. McGraw. He saw some of them starting to smile. Wow, thought Wilder. Wilder. From his new location on the grass, he stretched out his legs. He liked what he was hearing. A new sense of team spirit came across him, a deeper sense of connection. It was encouraging to hear Coach talk about this, to see him face the challenge head on. Now his speech was over. The players got up and started walking on the field to warm up. Good job, Coach. That was good. Wilder said to McGraw in a low voice as he walked past him, keeping his eyes down out of respect. Wilder McGraw, dot dot. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 0709. The basketball felt like it belonged in Chanel's hands even though it was only a practice game. Channel. She decided not to pass the ball to her twin sister, Vasha. Vasha. Instead, she stopped, jumped, and shot the ball toward the basket, but it bounced off the backboard. Chanel could see that her teammates were disappointed. Channel. The other team got the ball and soon scored, ending the game. When the practice game ended, Chanel felt her eyes sting with tears. Channel. It's okay. Vasha said in a comforting voice. Vasha. Chanel appreciated her, but Vasha wasn't making her feel any better. Channel Vasha. Vasha wanted to help her twin improve. Vasha. She invited her twin to practice with her. After school, they got their basketball and started practicing their basketball shots. At first, Chanel did not like practicing with Vasha because every time Vasha shot the ball, it went in. Channel Vasha Vasha. But whenever it was Chanel's turn, she missed. Channel. She got frustrated at not making a shot. Don't give up. Vasha shouted after each missed shot. Vasha. After 12 misses in a row, her 13th shot went in and she screamed, I finally did it. 1213. Her twin said, I knew you could. Now let's keep practicing. The next day, Chanel played in the championship game against a rival school. Channel. It was an intense game and the score was tied when Chanel was passed the ball by Vasha, with 10 seconds left in the game. Channel 10 Vasha. She leaped into the air and shot the ball. It went straight into the basket. Chanel's last shot had made her team the champions. Channel. 
Vasha and all her other teammates cheered for her. Vasha. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 1012. There was a very wealthy man who was bothered by severe eye pain. He consulted many doctors and was treated by several of them. He did not stop consulting a galaxy of medical experts, he was heavily medicated and underwent hundreds of injections. However, the pain persisted and was worse than before. At last, he heard about a monk who was famous for treating patients with his condition. Within a few days, the monk was called for by the suffering man. The monk understood the wealthy man's problem and said that for some time he should concentrate only on green colors and not let his eyes see any other colors. The wealthy man thought it was a strange prescription, but he was desperate and decided to try it. He got together a group of painters and purchased barrels of green paint and ordered that every object he was likely to see be painted green just as the monk had suggested. In a few days everything around that man was green. The wealthy man made sure that nothing around him could be any other color. When the monk came to visit him after a few days, the wealthy man's servants ran with buckets of green paint and poured them all over him because he was wearing red clothes. He asked the servants why they did that. They replied, we can't let our master see any other color. Dot. Hearing this, the monk laughed and said if only you had purchased a pair of green glasses for just a few dollars, you could have saved these walls, trees, pots, and everything else and you could have saved a large share of his fortune. You cannot paint the whole world green. Dot. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 1315. A businessman boarded a flight. Arriving at his seat, he greeted his travel companions, a middle-aged woman sitting at the window, and a little boy sitting in the aisle seat. After putting his bag in the overhead bin, he took his place between them. After the flight took off, he began a conversation with the little boy. He appeared to be about the same age as his son and was busy with a coloring book. He asked the boy a few usual questions, such as his age, his hobbies, as well as his favorite animal. He found it strange that such a young boy would be traveling alone, so he decided to keep an eye on him to make sure he was okay. About an hour into the flight, the plane suddenly began experiencing turbulence. 1. The pilot told everyone to fasten their seat belts and remain calm, as they had encountered rough weather. As the plane rose and fell several times, people got nervous and sat up in their seats. The man was also nervous and grabbing his seat as tightly as he could. Meanwhile, the little boy was sitting quietly beside him. His coloring book and crayons were put away neatly in the seat pocket in front of him, and his hands were calmly resting on his legs. Incredibly, he didn't seem worried at all. Then, suddenly, the turbulence ended. The pilot apologized for the bumpy ride and announced that they would be landing soon. As the plane began its descent, the man said to the little boy, You are just a little boy, but I have never met a braver person in all my life. Tell me, how is it that you remained so calm while all of us adults were so afraid? Looking him in the eyes, he said, My father is the pilot and he's taking me home. Dot. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 1618. John was a sensitive boy. John. Even his hair was ticklish. When Breeze touched his hair he would burst out laughing. And when this ticklish laughter started, no one could make him stop. John's laughter was so contagious that when John started feeling ticklish, everyone ended up in endless laughter. John John. He tried everything to control his ticklishness, wearing a thousand different hats, using ultra-strong hairsprays, and shaving his head. But nothing worked. One day he met a clown in the street. The clown was very old and could hardly walk, but when he saw John in tears, he went to cheer him up. John. It didn't take long to make John laugh, and they started to talk. 
John. John told him about his ticklish problem. John. Then he asked the clown how such an old man could carry on being a clown. I have no one to replace me, said the clown, and I have a very serious job to do. Dot. And then he took John to many hospitals, shelters, and schools. John. All were full of children who were sick, or orphaned, children with very serious problems. But as soon as they saw the clown, their faces changed completely and lit up with a smile. That day was even more special, because in every show John's contagious laughter would end up making the kids laugh a lot. John. The old clown winked at him and said now do you see what a serious job it is? That's why I can't retire, even at my age. Dot. And he added, not everyone could do it. He or she has to have a special gift for laughter. Dot. This said, the wind again set off John's ticklishness and his laughter. John. After a while, John decided to replace the old clown. John. From that day onward, the fact that John was different actually made him happy, thanks to his special gift. John. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 1921. Jennifer was on her way home. Jennifer. She decided to stop at a gas station to get coffee. After she paid for her coffee, she got back into her car, but before she started it, she noticed a woman standing outside in front of the building. She could tell that the woman was homeless by her appearance. Jennifer. Her clothes were worn and she was nothing but skin and bones. She must have not had enough money to get something to eat. Dot. Jennifer thought to herself, feeling pity for her. Jennifer. Suddenly, a dog walked up to the front of the building. Being a dog lover, Jennifer noticed that the dog was a German Shepherd. Jennifer. She could also tell that the dog was a mother, because anyone could notice that she had been feeding puppies. The dog was terribly in need of something to eat and she felt so bad for her. Jennifer. She knew if the dog didn't eat soon, she and her puppies would not make it. Jennifer sat in her car, looking at the dog. Jennifer. She noticed that people were walking by without paying attention to the dog. But she still did not do anything. Jennifer. However, someone did. The homeless woman, who Jennifer thought did not have money to buy herself anything to eat, went into the store. Jennifer. And what she did brought tears to Jennifer's eyes. Jennifer. She had gone into the store, bought a can of dog food, and fed that dog. She looked so happy to do it as well. The homeless woman. Watching the scene changed Jennifer's life entirely. Jennifer. You see, that day was Mother's Day. It took a homeless woman to show her what selfless giving and love is. Jennifer. From that day on, Jennifer has helped people in trouble, especially mothers struggling to raise children. Jennifer. The homeless woman made Jennifer a better person. Jennifer. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 2224. There once lived a girl named Melanie. Melanie. She wanted to be a ballet dancer. One day, Melanie's mother saw her dancing with the flawless steps and enthusiasm of a ballerina. Melanie Melanie. Isn't it strange? Melanie is dancing so well without any formal training. Her mother said. Melanie. I must get her professional lessons to help her polish her skill. Dot. The following day, Melanie accompanied her mother to a local dance institute. Melanie. Upon meeting the dance teacher, Mr. Edler, her mother requested to admit Melanie to his institute. Mr. Edler Melanie. The teacher asked Melanie to audition. Melanie. She was happy and showed him some of her favorite dance steps. However, he wasn't interested in her dance. He was busy with other tasks in the dance room. 
You can leave now. The girl is just average. Don't let her waste her time aspiring to be a dancer, he said. Dot. Melanie and her mother were shocked to hear this. Melanie. Disappointed, they returned home, tears rolling down Melanie's cheeks. Melanie. With her confidence and ego hurt, Melanie never danced again. Melanie. She completed her studies and became a school teacher. One day, the ballet instructor at her school was running late, and Melanie was asked to keep an eye on the class so that they wouldn't roam around the school. Melanie. Once inside the ballet room, she couldn't control herself. Melanie. She taught the students some steps and kept on dancing for some time. Unaware of time or the people around her, she was lost in her own little world of dancing. Just then, the ballet instructor entered the classroom and was surprised to see Melanie's incredible skill. Melanie. What a performance! The instructor said with a sparkle in her eyes. Melanie was embarrassed to see the instructor in front of her. Melanie. Sorry, ma'am. She said. For what? The instructor asked. You are a true ballerina. Dot. The instructor invited Melanie to accompany her to a ballet training center, and Melanie has never stopped dancing since. Melanie, Melanie. Today, she is a world-renowned ballet dancer. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 2527. Once upon a time there lived a poor but cheerful shoemaker. He was so happy, he sang all day long. The children loved to stand around his window to listen to him. Next door to the shoemaker lived a rich man. He used to sit up all night to count his gold. In the morning, he went to bed, but he could not sleep because of the sound of the shoemaker's singing. One day, he thought of a way of stopping the singing. He wrote a letter to the shoemaker asking him to visit. The shoemaker came at once and to his surprise the rich man gave him a bag of gold. When he got home again, the shoemaker opened the bag. He had never seen so much gold before. When he sat down at his bench and began, carefully, to count it, the children watched through the window. There was so much there that the shoemaker was afraid to let it out of his sight. So he took it to bed with him. But he could not sleep for worrying about it. Very early in the morning, he got up and brought his gold down from the bedroom. He had decided to hide it up the chimney instead. But he was still uneasy, and in a little while he dug a hole in the garden and buried his bag of gold in it. It was no use trying to work. He was too worried about the safety of his gold. And as for singing, he was too miserable to utter a note. He could not sleep, or work, or sing and, worst of all, the children no longer came to see him. At last, the shoemaker felt so unhappy that he seized his bag of gold and ran next door to the rich man. Please take back your gold, he said. Dot. The worry of it is making me ill, and I have lost all of my friends. I would rather be a poor shoemaker, as I was before. Dot. And so the shoemaker was happy again and sang all day at his work. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 2830. You've been a very good girl this year, Emma. Emma. Tonight, Santa will drop by our house to leave you some presents. Dot. Martha told her little girl, smiling. Martha, Martha. And for you too, Fred, she added. Fred. Dot. She wanted to give her two children so much more, but this year had been especially hard for Martha. Martha. She had worked day and night to buy some Christmas gifts for her children. That night, after everyone had gone to bed, Emma slowly climbed out of bed. Emma. She took out a page from a notebook to write a letter to Santa. She whispered to herself as she wrote. Dear Santa. Will you send a few smiles and laughs for my mother? She doesn't laugh much. 
And will you send a few toys for Fred as well? Thank you. Martha. Fred. Dot. Emma folded the letter twice and sealed it within an envelope. Emma. She left the envelope outside the front door and went back to sleep. Emma came running up to her mother the next morning. Emma. Mommy, Santa really did come last night. Martha smiled, thinking of the candies and cookies she must have found in her socks. Emma, Martha. Did you like his gifts? Yes, they are wonderful. Fred loves his toys, too. Fred. Dot. Martha was confused. Martha. She wondered how the candies and cookies had become toys overnight. Martha ran into Emma's room and saw a small red box that was half open. Martha Emma. She knelt down and glanced inside to see its contents. The box contained some toys, countless little candies and cookies. Mommy, this is for you from Santa. Dot. Emma said holding out a card towards Martha. Emma Martha. Puzzled, she opened it. Martha. It said, Dear Emma's mother. A very Merry Christmas. Hi, I am Amelia. Emma. Amelia. I found your child's letter blowing across the street last night. I was touched and couldn't help but respond. Please accept the gift as a Christmas greeting. Dot. Martha felt tears falling down her cheeks. Martha, Martha. She slowly wiped them off and hugged her daughter. Merry Christmas, Emma. Didn't I tell you Santa would come? Emma. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 3133. I was on a train in Switzerland. The train came to a stop, and the conductor's voice over the loudspeaker delivered a message in German, then Italian, then French. I had made the mistake of not learning any of those languages before my vacation. After the announcement, everyone started getting off the train, and an old woman saw I was confused and stressed. She came up to me. She spoke some English and she told me that an accident had happened on the tracks. She asked me where I was trying to get to, then she got off the train and went to a woman in the ticket booth. The old woman got a rail map and timetable from her and came back to tell me that we'd have to hop trains three or four times to get there. I was really glad she was headed the same way because it would have been hopeless for me to figure it out on my own. So we went from one train station to the next, getting to know each other along the way. It was a 2.5-hour journey in total, and when we finally made it to the destination, we got off and said our goodbyes. 2.5 I had made it just in time to catch my train to Rome, and she told me she had a train to catch too. I asked her how much farther she had to go, and it turned out her home was two hours back the other way. She had jumped from train to train and traveled the whole way just to make sure I made it. You are the nicest person I've ever met, I said. Dot. She smiled gently and hugged me and told me I'd better hurry off so I wouldn't miss my train. This woman spent her entire day sitting on trains taking her hours away from her home just to help out a confused tourist visiting her country. No matter how many countries I visit or sites I see, I always say the most beautiful country in the world is Switzerland. MTC. Good job. MTC. Let's start. 242, Chapter 20 Number. 3436. Maria Sutton was a social worker in a place where the average income was very low. Maria Sutton. Many of Maria's clients had lost their jobs when the coal industry in a nearby town collapsed. Maria. Every Christmas season, knowing how much children loved presents at Christmas, Maria tried to arrange a special visit from Santa Claus for one family. Maria Alice, the seven-year-old daughter of Maria, was very enthusiastic about helping with her mother's Christmas event. Maria 7, Alice This year's lucky family was a 25-year-old mother named Karen and her three-year-old son, who she was raising by herself. Karen 253 
However, things went wrong. Two weeks before Christmas Day, a representative from a local organization called Maria to say that the aid she had requested for Karen had fallen through. 2. Maria Karen No Santa Claus No presents Maria saw the cheer disappear from Alice's face at the news. Maria Alice After hearing this, she ran to her room. When Alice returned, her face was set with determination. Alice she counted out the coins from her piggy bank, $4.30. $4.30. Mom, she told Maria, I know it's not much. But maybe this will buy a present for the kid. Maria. Maria gave her daughter a lovely hug. Maria. The next day, Maria told her co-workers about her daughter's latest project. Maria. To her surprise, Staff members began to open their purses. The story of Alice's gift had spread beyond Maria's office, and Maria was able to raise $300 plenty for a Christmas gift for Karen and her son. Alice Maria, Maria 300 Karen On Christmas Eve, Maria and Alice visited Karen's house with Christmas gifts. Maria Alice Karen When Karen opened the door, Maria and Alice wished the astonished woman a Merry Christmas. Karen, Maria Alice. Then Alice began to unload the gifts from the car, handing them to Karen one by one. Alice, Karen. Karen laughed in disbelief, and said she hoped she would one day be able to do something similar for someone else in need. Karen. On her way home, Maria said to Alice, God multiplied your gift. Maria Alice.